Hey guys, welcome back to part 11 of the Decker tutorial. So in the last video we learned how we can use the singleton annotation to tell Decker to only create a single instance of an object and use this instance whenever this object is requested as a dependency somewhere instead of creating new instances all the time. There was one caveat however. The singleton annotation was a bit misleading because it wasn't a true application-wide singleton, it was only a singleton within the same component because this is what creates all these objects and dependencies. And we could see the effect of this by creating two different component objects and requesting one car from each of them. This way we had two cars even though it was supposed to be a singleton. We can also see the effect of this when we just rotate the device, because as you might know, when we rotate an Android device, the activity on the screen gets destroyed and recreated. So even though we have two times the same driver at the moment, when I rotate this emulator, we get two new drivers. Because the activity was destroyed together with the component and then recreated with a new component. But in real apps this is a problem because you often want an application-wide singleton and not something that gets destroyed whenever your activity gets destroyed. And since the lifecycle of these objects depends on the component that contains them, we have to retain our component for the whole lifecycle of the app, not just for one activity. A good example for this is an OK HTTP client, because you usually want to use the same instance of it throughout your whole app and not just in the scope of one activity. And we can achieve this by putting the component into the application class. So let's see how this works. So we create a new Java class in our root package here. We have to give it a name. The name doesn't really matter. I'm gonna call it example app, but it has to extend the Android application class. We don't change anything else and click OK. An application class has an onCreate method, just like activities. This will be executed when we start our app. And in this class at the top, we create a private member variable for a car component, which we call component. And we create it in the onCreate method. Component equals, the same as we do it in an activity, dagger car component dot builder. Then we have to pass our runtime arguments, horsepower, engine capacity. Then we call dot build. And then to access this component outside of this class, we create a public getter method. So we write public car component and we name the method get app component. And this simply returns the component instance. As we can see from this warning here, this is not active by default. We have to tell Android that we want to use this as our application class. For this we go into the manifest file, androidmanifest.xml. And here within this application tag at the top, we write android colon name and pass our example app. Now this class wraps our whole application. Okay, and then we have to go into our main activity and change the way how we get our component because now we don't want to create it in our activity. Instead, we want to retrieve the one that we created in our application class. And in activities, we can get the application with get application. But in order to access our custom method, we have to cast this to our example app type. Then we have to surround this whole thing with another pair of parentheses like this. And then we can call our get app component method. This now retrieves the component from the application class instead of creating a new one in here. So let's start it again and see what happens. And now we still have two times the same driver object just as before. But the difference now is that when we rotate the device and the activity gets destroyed and recreated, we will still get back the same driver instance with the same hash code as here. Because this object is now retained on the application level and lives as long as our application lives. So let's try. And indeed, we still have the same driver objects. So now this is a true application-wide singleton. This means with our current setup, we have two options. We can create application-wide singletons that live as long as the application itself, or we can let Dagger create a new object whenever a dependency is requested. But you might often have the situation that you want to create a singleton just in the lifetime of an activity, or for example, of a fragment, or some other scope that gets cleared from memory when the life cycle of that scope is over, but you still want to have application-wide singletons as well. For example, let's say we want to keep our driver as an application-wide singleton, and we also want to reuse the same car instance, but only in the lifetime of one activity. 
so we always want the same driver, but when we get a new activity, we want two new cars. So we need a way to apply the singleton annotation on different levels. For this we have to create custom scopes. To see how we can do this, let's take a look into the singleton annotation, which looks like this. Here this annotation is declared, and it has three other annotations. This one defines that this is a scope, and those two are just meta annotations, they don't really matter that much. Documented just defines how this annotation gets handled by a Java doc, which is a documentation generator, and this defines how long this annotation is retained. And since some dependency injection frameworks need these annotations at runtime, and this all belongs to the JSR 330 specification, it is common convention to just take it like you can see it here, to make sure that it's interoperable and works with other libraries and dependency injection frameworks. So these two annotations here don't matter that much. If you want to learn more about them, you can Google them or click on them and press Ctrl B, but they don't matter for our Decker example. And since Singleton belongs to this JSR 330 specification that we already learned about before, they are not provided by Decker, but by this JavaX inject package, and this is why we have this annotation by default. Decker just uses the one that is already there. But we can easily create our own scopes, for this we copy these three lines, Ctrl Z, and create a new class in our Decker package. And then we give it a name that describes the lifetime of the scope. For example, per activity. Because we want to use this to create singletons that only live as long as the activity. You could also name this activity scope, or create something like a fragment scope, or a user scope, that lives as long as the user is locked in. But in our example it will be a per activity. And then we change class to annotation. And click OK. Then above this we paste our three annotations and click OK. And this is all we have to do to create our custom scope annotation. We said that we want to use our per activity scope on our car. So let's go into our car class. And since this class has an add inject annotated constructor, we put the scope annotation on the class declaration directly, per activity. And this will now work exactly as the singleton annotation. It tells Stagger to only create a single instance of a car within the same component. There's nothing special about Singleton. All these scope annotations work the same. So if we would just use this in our app component, Dagger would still just create an application-wide Singleton. It doesn't know what per activity means. It doesn't know that it's supposed to get rid of this car when the activity is destroyed. We are responsible for actually realizing this new scope. And the way we do this is by creating a second component which then only lives as long as the activity, while the component that we declared in our application class lives as long as the application. So we will use our car component as our activity component and create a new component for the app class. So let's go into the car component file. We change singleton to per activity. And then let's also rename this class by clicking on it and pressing Shift F6. And we call it activity component. Enter. Here we click select all and then OK. And then here we click do refactor, which should change everything. And then we create a second component class in our dagger package. We call this one app component. And just like our activity component, it has to be an interface. OK. As usual, we have to annotate it with add component. And this class also gets the singleton annotation. Because this will provide all objects that are scoped with add singleton, which at the moment is our driver. Because we want to tell Dagger that we want to get this object from our app component and not from our activity component, which has the per activity annotation. And you usually use the singleton annotation on the app component because this is the outermost scope. And otherwise the term singleton might be misleading. But you can also just ignore the singleton annotation completely and create a custom scope for the application component as well. Something like add application scope. But again this has the same effect. And what we later want to do is we want to connect our two components. We want to instantiate an activity component in our activity. But we want to say, hey whenever you need a driver, don't instantiate it yourself. Instead get it from the app component. And we have to define what we want to expose to the outside from this app component. Otherwise our activity component doesn't have access to it. So when we want to use a driver from the app component, we have to create a getter method, which has the driver as the return type. 
This is a provision method, just as we had it in the very beginning with our get car method in our car component, if you remember, and we simply write get driver. But again, the name doesn't matter, only the return type. You can also name this just driver or whatever you want. Now our driver class has an add inject constructor, which means that Dagger can just instantiate it directly. But to make this whole example a bit more clear, let's put this into a module and imagine that we can't use an add inject constructor here. So we remove this. We also remove the singleton annotation. And then I put the same comment in here that we also have on our reads classes, where we imagine that we can't use an add inject constructor. So instead we provide it from a module. So in our Dagger package, we create a newer class. Let's call it driver module. Okay. We have to annotate it with add module. We make it abstract because we don't depend on any instance of this module. And then we create a provides method, which we make static. We already learned about this before. This returns a driver. We have to import this class with alt enter. We take the one with our package name and we call it provide driver. And this simply returns a new driver. And now that we get this driver from a provides method, we have to put a scope annotation directly on the provides method. So we put singleton here. And then we go back into our app component and add this module to the declaration. Driver module.class. This has the exact same effect as before when our driver had the add inject constructor, but this makes this example a bit more clear. Because when you take a look at the code later, we can see, okay, our app component contains the driver module, so it is responsible for providing a driver, and our activity component contains the engine module and the wheels module. This just makes this example easier to understand in my opinion. And of course you can also give this module a constructor to provide runtime arguments, the same as we learned it before in the stateful modules video. And in real apps you usually do this to get the application context into the app component, which is only available at runtime. But here we don't need a constructor. And then we go into our app class again. Because here we now don't want an activity component, we want an app component. So we change this to an app component down here in the getter method as well. And then we remove this and instead write Dagger app component. If it can't find it, like right now, we have to rebuild the project. So I put a comment before this. Build, rebuild. We ignore any warnings. Remove the comment here. And then we set this to a Dagger app component dot create. We don't have any stateful modules and no binds instance methods, so we don't have to pass anything to this component. The driver module will be instantiated and passed automatically. Next we go into our activity component once again. And here before modules within the parentheses, we write dependencies equals and then we write app component dot class comma. This way we tell Dagger whenever we create an activity component, it needs an app component to work because this is where it gets its driver from. And the way we get this app component into our activity component is by a setter method. The setter method normally gets generated automatically. But if you remember when we create such a component builder, we take full responsibility for how our builder looks, which means that we also have to explicitly create this setter method for the app component. So within this interface, we simply write builder and the method name app component, which takes an app component instance and we call it component. No method body since this is an interface. Again, if you don't have a component builder, this method will be generated automatically. But with a component builder, we have to explicitly declare it. Okay, now we create our app component in our application class. So the next destination is our main activity because here we now want to instantiate an activity component and not an app component. So we delete this part. We write Dagger. Again, it can't find the activity component. So we rebuild the project again. No warnings this time. And then we assign this to a Dagger activity component dot builder, because now as usual, we have to pass horsepower and engine capacity 
And now we also have to pass an app component. Otherwise this will not compile because we define that our activity component depends on an app component to work. And we still get it the same way as we got it before. We have to cast get application to our example app and then we call our getter method get app component like this and then we call dot build. Now we have an activity component that contains an app component internally where it gets its driver from. Okay, so now what do we expect when we start this app? We expect to get a single car per activity because it has the same scope as our activity component. But our driver doesn't have the per activity annotation. Instead it has the same annotation as the app component, singleton. And in our activity component, we define that it needs an app component to work. So this is where it will now get its driver instance from. So when we start our app, we should get the same driver no matter how often we rotate our device because it's an application-wide singleton, but our car should only be a singleton within our activity component. So we will get two times the same car here, but when we rotate the emulator, we should get two new cars. So let's try this. Okay, so we have two times the same driver and two times the same car. Both are singletons within their own scope. When we rotate the device, we still have the same driver because it's an application-wide singleton. And we have two new cars because they have the per activity scope, which makes them two singletons only in the activity lifecycle. But again, ultimately we are responsible for managing these scopes. And the way we do this is by instantiating and releasing our different dagger components in the correct places. These components are just simple Java objects. When there is no reference to them anymore, they get released from memory. And together with it, all the objects they contain. If it's confusing, don't worry, it's not an easy concept. Just watch the video again and take a look at the code snippets in the description box. You can also take a look at the Decker generated code to better understand what is happening under the hood. There's not really anything new in there in comparison to the last videos. It's now just a bit more complex and a bit more entangled. And of course we now have two generated Decker components, one for the activity component, one for the app component. And the Decker activity component contains a reference to the Decker app component. Just one more thing we will do here is updating the version numbers of Decker. So we go into the Gradle scripts folder, into the build.gradle file with module colon app, and then we update tour 16, tour tour 22, both dependencies. Actually, when we started this video series, there was already a tour 21 available, but for some reason it showed tour 16 to me. But this doesn't matter because the changes are minor and they don't affect anything that we learned in the videos up to now. So we click sync now. That's it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe for upcoming parts. And if this video was helpful, as usual, please leave a like. Take care.